<laughs> okay, so thank you so much for joining me for an episode of the Flow Protocols. Um, I am very excited about this episode because Chris uh, Gosden is the author of Magic, the History of Alchemy, and also the Professor of European Archaeology at uh, Oxford, and you were a curator for a museum. At one stage, you have a very illustrious career. But basically, in short, why I'm super pumped to have you here is you have done extensive uh, research on magic from the sort of anthropological, archaeological standpoint, which is so fascinating to me. So welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure, real pleasure to be here. <laughs> so I'd like to just start off this interview by asking you what your definition of magic is. And I know in the book, you, you, you're you sort of um, creating three strands that you talk about a lot. So if you just want to explain that for anyone that hasn't read your book. Yes. No. Well, definitions are tricky and crucial, of course. So my definition of magic is is participation, human participation in the universe. It's a feeling, if you believe in magic, of being much more continuous with the universe than we might think from sort of modern day physics. So our potentially, at least our, our words in terms of spells and things like that can affect change in the way in which the world works various potions you can you could write things on tablets and they will mm -hmm. make someone well or make someone ill um and equally um in in the sort of opposite way in a sense it's a it's a humanization of the universe it means that the universe isn't quite as alien and different um than we might think so so rather than us being you know, a special creation apart from the universe. We're very much immersed in the flows and energies and forces of the universe. Yeah. And and as you said, I use this idea of a sort of triple helix mm. to think about science, religion, and magic. And so a 19th century views would see that the evolution of human thought is going from magic to religion to science. And each one was better and more rational and more you know, worthwhile than the previous. Whereas I just don't think that's true. Mm. I think they're they're intertwined with each other they do slightly different well they do do different things not just slightly different things but they're all part of what it means to be human yeah. and an important part of of that so i don't particularly have any religious belief but religion would be a belief in a single god or many gods mm -hmm. um, and science is a an understanding of the world through mass and force and processes of life and growth so I don't think by choosing one, you're turning your back on the others. I think a healthy human life has elements of, of magic, religion and science. All, all three, things. yeah. And what's fascinating is because you're describing it's almost been an evolution of these paradigms or ways of thinking, and yet magic and religion have both carried through with very strong currents. And my experience of it, granted, I know I'm living in my own sort of reality tunnel, but it does seem like more and more people are starting to have conversations around magic. It seems to be hitting mainstream a lot better now. Uh, it feels like it's making a resurgence in many ways. Has that been yeah. your sort of impression on it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's that's spot on. I think many people are rethinking our relationship with the planet mm. um, and, and not just having some sort of extractive relationship that we can take what we want from the world, that, mm. that maybe we should think about the, the way in which we live more in terms of care and yeah. reciprocation. And looking after not just each other, but looking after the you know, aspects of the physical world. So for me, magic is a series of really ancient resources that helps you 
do that. Yeah, and, and and you're right. I mean, there's there's wonderful things these days, like witch talk. I don't know if you've come across yeah. witch talk. <laughs> 34 billion views. Billions of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so all human life is there in all its all its wonderful variety. And people are, you know, people are exploring astrology, people are exploring all sorts of all sorts of different things yeah and I, I think we should be in a moment of exploration really yeah so your definition is something along the lines where there's pliability of reality caused by human consciousness or thought or intention and there's ways of enchant magic is creates ways of enchanting that uh process that yeah, no, no, that's that's absolutely right. I think, I mean, the way I think of it, which is getting sort of slightly closer to a, a, a scientific paradigm, is in terms of things like energy flows and, mm. and participations in energy. And and there's a lot, you know, there's obviously a lot about the world that we don't don't understand. Yeah, um, science is almost a way to describe the magic or try to explain it. Yeah. Exactly. No, no, that's very well put. No, that's it. That's exactly. So, yeah, as I said before, they're not sort of antithetical. They're not enemies to each other. They're doing um, they're coming at the, at the same complex reality, but from slightly different directions. Mm -hmm. So are you would you you've studied this so much? You've been in the sort of thick of it. Would you consider yourself an alchemist or magician or whatever term? Do you believe in magic? That's a really good question. I mean, I think the answer, unfortunately, is yes and no. I don't, I don't, rather boringly, I don't practice alchemy or, or yes, I don't, I don't turn my cat into So what's into the it. yes? Like, what the, what do you mean by yes? Yeah. Well, so I'm experimenting with, with thoughts. So a question like, is the world sentient? Um, I think is a really important one for me and not, so, so a lot of modern bio is telling us that you know trees communicate that all sorts of life forms yeah, are, are yeah. able to yeah so way more communicate. complex than we even imagined right i remember when i was a yes. kid they didn't think animals communicated with each other and you hear yeah. that now and you you realize how ridiculous that sounds yeah, yeah. no that's right <laughs> that's right yeah, so now it's obvious that trees are sending chemical messages to each other through their roots people talk about that the wood wide web and all that sort of stuff but yeah. but i think the question gets interesting when you talk about the rocks and the, and the things that we would consider not to be sentient at all but mm -hmm. many many people in the world would and so i think you're in new zealand at the moment and broadly speaking maori culture would see the whole of the world as yeah. having elements of, of sentience of being living so a mountain mm. could be so, so i i'm i'm a boring old westerner and and slightly stuck in a science paradigm but i keep experimenting with with thinking like that and i think i should think more like that um, <laughs> and i keep coming up against the limits of what i can i can believe but i yeah i'll keep i'll keep pushing away slightly well, I'm and, sure and, you're engaged in it, even without even realizing, right? Because if it's a conversation of the human having impact on its environment uh, and all things connected, then you're already performing magic all the time, if that's the case, without yeah. doing it intentionally. Yeah. No, 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 that's exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. And I think I think we are in a, you know, obviously in a sort of ecological and climate mess at the moment. So we need to rethink all these really vital. It's not enough just uh you know not buy as many avocados or whatever although we probably do need to do that too yeah. but we need to a, a fairly fundamental fundamental rethink of of where we are in the world what sort of relationships we have yeah. and i think magic magic's very helpful there yeah beautiful so one of the thing that that i found interesting when i was reading your book was across all kinds of different cultures and even across timelines like paleolithic age the aztecs almost every single magical group that you talk about well what i seem to pick up on was there was a very 
recurrent theme of this sort of offering and give to get where sacrifice or offering seems to be this like human code, regardless of distances, they all kind of performed in this kind of ritual. What's your sort of take on that? Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's very accurate indeed. So, yeah, so there is in most cultures, possibly not ours so much, a notion of of reciprocal relations Mm. with a god with the spirits of the land you know these things are slightly differently conceived the ancestors are often really important in various different ways so that human well-being relies on these other forces the ancestors the gods the spirits and and in order to make that a living relationship you have to give and Mm. you have to give stuff that's really important I mean the 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 sort of prime example. <laughs> yeah, yes, no, that's right, that's right. Yes, so so God telling Abraham to kill his son Isaac right. is the sort of paradise. You know, it doesn't become any more important than that. Yeah, you might kill one of your children, but so so it's it's that sort of that that you you are in a a, a series of a reciprocal of, engagement yeah. with the universe. Yeah, 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 and and so we've lost all of that. We don't we don't think, you know, when when we take things from the world, we just take them yeah. and, and you know, the world will keep on giving. Except now we're realizing that it can't because we've yeah. taken oh, taken to that. So, yeah. so magic yes. brings in that reciprocity again. I love that. It, 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 it does it does yes it's it's yeah. not just us saying oh you know i'd love a you know a new iphone or something yeah it's, it's Taking thinking what are the consequences mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 i definitely yeah. think we could do with a healthy dose of that these days yeah for sure yes <laughs> yes 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 yeah so it rebalances our relationship really with the with yeah. the world around us yeah so the more I speak to you, the more I feel like you are like a closet magician. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> academically <laughs> denying it. <laughs> I mean, no, no, that's, 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 it is like a little bit of career suicide in academia to admit to this. Be, or because you're so enmeshed in the world, everyone expects you to believe it anyways. Or do you still feel like there's this weird judgment in academia about magic? Yes, both in academia, but also in 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 both religious right. and scientific mm-hmm. circles. Yeah, I mean, people who are strictly religious or strictly scientific don't like the thought yeah. um, that all these different views should be possible. That we should we should think our way through yeah. these possibilities. Yeah. So yeah, now there's a fair bit of. I, I mean, I think as you say, like many things in the world today, we're really split. There's loads of people who are really interested in magic for all the reasons we've just been talking about. But then there's there's a lot of people for whom it's, you know, almost akin to devil worship or something. Right. So, yeah. Which is so funny, it's really though, different. because you talk about how Jesus, Muhammad and Moses and the likes were basically alchemists. I mean, if turning <laughs> water into wine isn't the literal definition yeah, of yeah, alchemy... Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what yeah, it is. Yeah. Parting yeah. ocean, parting seas. Yes. So, yes. do you want to ex- like extra, like go a little bit deeper on that? Where, yeah, th- there's a lot of esotericism, right? That is rooted yeah. in religion. Yes. Yes. No. Very well put. Yeah. No. I think yeah, religion and science have always had a tricky sort of sibling rivalry relationship. Really, they're they're in some ways, you know, they get so cross with each other because they're they're so similar. So, so the pro in the in the Reformation, the Protestant Church's um, basic criticism of the Catholic Church was it was this huge machine for the production of magic. Mm. that it did magic. Mm. and the mass of course was was right at the heart of that turning the the bread and wine into the body and blood of christ which as you say is you know sort of deeply transformational and people go particularly the catholic church there are all sorts of things that people did they take 
holy water from the font to try and cure their child. They keep the host in the mass under their tongue to give to a sick cow. So there, there was a whole range of things where, where so, so Protestantism and, and, and Islam and other religions have been through similar sorts of things was an attempt to purge magic. But every time, you know, people try to purge magic, it, it sort of, you know, it's like it's like grass growing through tarback or something. It keeps yeah. it keeps coming back. You can keep laying the tarback down, but the grass will keep keep Which growing. Which says a lot, given how fast our technology is, our understanding of our even developments in scientific technology, and yet it's it's not going away like it's oh, it, no. it, it's almost no. oskim's razor right it's here yeah. because there's a layer that works for sure yeah it, exactly and it fulfills a sort of psychological emotional um spiritual set of i, I mean i know you're interviewing me but what what's your view <laughs> on magic and all those sorts of things <laughs> I, I, get, I get the feeling that you're quite you know, sympathetic to these sorts of oh things. yeah oh well, if you saw what i had behind <laughs> but, <laughs> so I I my definition of magic is the ability to create physical change through imagination and thoughts. So I think wow. we we share a very similar de definition. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I use rituals. So what I loved about magic, I discovered it 2 years ago and what I saw set it apart from the normal you know, the hype manifestation, law of attraction, a lot of people can get behind that nowadays. But right. it still yeah. feels like magic is a little bit weird. But when you read all that stuff, it's the same thing as magic. It's the same things they were talking about. But yes, I love yeah. uh, Gnosis, which is the right. altered state of consciousness that magic brings to the table. So yes, I've been playing yes. around with that quite a bit and testing uh, okay. out different methods and everything just makes more sense about even the churches, how they built them in the ways that they did so that sound would re reverberate and put people almost into a state of trance so that when you're there and you're praying or setting intentions, it's like amplifying what you're doing in a way. It's it's yeah, just yeah, been yeah, yeah. so delicious exploring it all. And Reading your book has, I think, really connected me back to this space of knowing, oh, this has been around for a really, really long time. This isn't just like the popular thing of the, you know, like this thing that's going to come and go like Zumba classes. Like it's been around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. Way it's back. Yeah. It's been around as long as as modern humans have been around. Yeah. So it is it is a sort of integral strand of of what it means to be human, really. And yeah. and at times, you know, say maybe the 19th, 30, 20th century, the Western world's been quite good at denying that it's there. Right. Uh, but it is. It is. And it keeps yeah. keeps coming back. So yeah, no, it is it is right sort of deep, deep within us. That that desire to to connect with the world, to connect with each other, to connect with sort of spiritual forces yeah. in other ways yeah so when you were a curator at the museum yeah. you were dealing yeah. with all sorts of magical wares and all, all of that yeah. kind of stuff was it, what was the coolest yeah. item that ever came through for you or was there a piece that you were like oh my goodness this is this is strange <laughs> so, so I worked in the Pitt Rivers Museum, which is one of the Oxford University Museums, yeah. uh, an ethnographic museum. The, one of the, the favourite objects of both the staff and the, the um, visitors is a witch in a bottle. Oh, really? So, yeah, like yeah. I so there's a little little bottle which is which is silvered, so you can't actually see. It's a glass glass bottle, but you can't see inside. Oh. And it came from the foundation of a house in Brighton on the south coast of Britain. It was found in the early 20th century by a woman called Margaret Murray, who who was herself a witch. Um and it said that it's got a little sort of, you know, stopper on the top. It said that if you ever take the stopper off the bottle, the witch will get out. Oh, and, and no one pulled it off ever? No one pulled it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but people are always fascinated because you can't see it. You know, is there a witch? Isn't there? What What would that be like? All that sort of thing. So it's a very sort of thought provoking 
object. And and it's part of a long tradition of people sort of burying things in foundations to protect the house. There's a whole series. There's really sort of poignant things like children's shoes were put in voids in walls in houses yeah. to protect the children of the house. Yeah. And you see one of those and and, you know, they're several hundred years old and they have an immediate sort of emotional impact on yeah. you, this sort of kid's shoe that's there to protect other children. So it's all part of a whole range of different forms of magic mm. to, to, in this case, to protect the house that people played around with in all sorts of ways. Cats, for, no, I don't know quite why, but cats sometimes got walled up in houses, which you don't oh. want to think. <laughs> yes, maybe That's nobody really understands. Ritual. Yes, they are strange creatures. Yes, they you're never quite sure where you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, I, maybe a cat will will come in and join us in a minute. So I've got cat. <laughs> magical I mean, creatures. Well, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Certainly, in a, in a little reality of their own. Yeah. yeah. But maybe the cats were there to to protect the house against rats, and in turn yeah, to protect the house right. against plague and those sorts of things. It's one of those things that nobody quite knows what's going on. Yeah, I think one of the things that you made very clear in your book was that it's it's almost hard for us to even imagine the way that a human back in those days would even think or how their view of the world would even work because, you know, right after the Ice Age, everything is just so different than now. It's the way that we think now isn't how they would have seen their world. Yeah. 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 Yes. The one the one thing I've learned studying the past for 40 odd years, and this may not be a very good return for taxpayers money. <laughs> but the one thing I've, I've really learned is that the past was different. Yeah. Um, so, so the first thing you've got to do in approaching the past is think about our own common sense, the yeah. uh, our ways in which we you know think about the world because because they won't work. Yeah. And we yeah. can never we can never stop being ourselves, but we can we can start to put ourselves into other people's mindsets. So again, things like magic. I mean, I think if you've taken a sort of, you know, democratic vote throughout human history, magic would, would you know, belief in magic would win out by, you know, 90 odd percent of people would say, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so the fact that we, we don't necessarily believe in those, those sorts of things is an impact impediment to understanding the past yeah there's still a bit of a stigma and somebody said something so it just hit me so much uh, a week ago they said do you think the reason there's so much stigma and fear around magic whereas no one's having a problem getting behind manifestation law of attraction uh, they right. said do you think it's because there's like residual PTSD from past lives where we've all either been persecuted or we've been part of persecuting so there's deep fears whereas manifestation and those words didn't necessarily exist the, yeah. back then yeah. so there's no yes. charge yeah. with that. isn't that interesting, yeah, no, interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, really really interesting but also magic has often been certainly in the western world part of the weapons of the weak mm, so there is a real lower, real fear yeah yes that's right people lower down in society um felt that they had some power through magic so the whole you know sort of witch persecution thing which had many layers and dimensions but there was certainly partly that that the you know the the people in charge of society were worried mm. about these, these up risings of magic and magical belief and what it might might do to their power ultimately so i think there's there's often that as well that it's outside some yeah. of the mainstream views of how the world should work so have you like tried rituals or tried any of these things that you encountered? Were you ever at once curious to like spin around the pentagram or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I've done, I've done a little bit of that and I've tried okay, tarot yeah. cards and various, yeah, yeah. <laughs> various things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but yeah, I don't, I don't know is the, uh, is the answer. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, it's a bit like ghosts for me. You I've never lev seen... Levitate. <laughs> no, I, not, not, not that I remember anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but i've i've worked a, a, one story i have in the book um i worked for a long time in papua new guinea which is one of the most amazing 
places on earth yeah so i was taken by a group of people to a, an area in the rainforest um where there were stones lying on the ground a bit like sort of stalactite stones yeah. and they said these stones can fly around and if you know how to to understand them they'll the pattern of the movement of the stones will tell yeah. you the future yeah um and I said, "Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to see them move." And they said, "No, no, they wouldn't do it if a white person was here." Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you but, drop some acid, they'd start moving. <laughs> well, but yes, yeah, so, so there are there like are all those drink issues. This first. <laughs> it, exactly. Yes, drink this little coconut drink. We'll see what happens to you. Yeah, but yeah. But actually, yeah. that is the question I'd love to ask you: Is there strong psychedelic themes in a lot of these rituals and customs of magic back in the day? Is that something that sure. has been found and? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, just like magic, I mean, all human cultures have drugs. Yeah. Um, they vary what they are. You know, the Aboriginal people have pitchery, this this root that's only really found in Australia. But nobody nobody doesn't have mind altering substances. Yeah. And then there's also things like, you know, if you dance for 12 hours without eating and drinking, very much, yeah, there you then, go. then you won't be in the same state at the end as you were at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. So a lot of those things are to do with uh, the alteration of the mind and perception and all of that, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and people can then leave their normal lives and enter, enter an importantly different reality where, where other stuff happens. Yeah. Um, and, and we obviously, you know, there are raves and all those sorts of things. So we do have those things in our society, but maybe they're not as institutionalized as yeah. as they are in many societies, which, again, it probably makes us the poorer psychologically. Yeah. yeah, they're not intentional with the channeling of the magic that's really happening in those states that they're in. It's just like yeah. a party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and and Not things too. like christmas you know we drink yeah, a bit yeah. too, we eat a lot of chocolate and we watch the television <laughs> but that doesn't really i mean it sort of alters our state of reality but not very yeah. much yeah which Whereas, is, which, that's what the aztecs were doing right when you were talking about how they would inflict a lot of pain on themselves which is also yeah. a method of gnosis yeah. but not a pleasant one yeah no 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 i mean our whole world is set up to avoid pain but yes they they pull um thorns through their tongues and, and yeah. all that sort of stuff that we find unimaginable that that you could do that to yourself yeah um, but yeah i mean yes yeah, it's, it's quite a common sort of an, an initiation rites. i wonder often. if that's why people are addicted to tattoos the way that they get addicted to piercings and tattoos because you get yeah. high from the pain which yeah is yeah yeah. that 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 vibration of gnosis i guess yeah yeah no yeah. no no I, there's definitely yeah definitely something there yes and and altering the surface of the body and yeah those, yeah and of course tattoos are very ancient Your vision board while you're getting tattooed <laughs> right right yes 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 yeah, that's right Before that's magic, right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So there are tattoos um, two and a half thousand years ago. There are these frozen tombs in Siberia. Mm. Um, all sorts of there's a carpet preserved. There's all sorts of things, amazing things. But there's some elements of the human body um, yeah. and they they have tattoos on them um yeah. of things like tigers eating a deer so it's hard to so the sort of tiger and deer are morphing into each other and yeah. of course they're on the surface of a human body so you've got these three different entities yeah. um, they were definitely the doing psychedelics and... right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, in those in those tombs, there's often cannabis and those sorts. Oh, of things, really? Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, for this uh, conversation, this time together. It's so fascinating. I feel like you're the male tomb raider. Like the Laura Croft, yeah. <laughs> and all these like mystery dugouts and archaeological digs and around magic. It's so cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> Not quite as glamorous, I think, as Laura Croft, but there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I think it's really important to explore these different dimensions of what it means to be human. And and as I was saying before, I mean, I think it's quite pressing in yeah. the modern to, yeah. to reset our, our yeah. thoughts and our relationships. Yeah, so thank you for being a champion, willing to open this conversation, willing to start to normalize it, because I think it does take a lot of courage, especially if you're an academic, to talk about magic in the way that you do. And it is beginning to build like a bubble. And, and it's certainly changed my life reading your book. So thank you so much for being no. a change maker and showing up with your work. <laughs> That's very generous of you to say so. Thank you. I've really enjoyed our conversation. No, yeah, ditto. <laughs> So uh, everybody go and grab Chris's book. It is called Magic from Alchemy to Witchcraft from the Ice Age to the Present. Highly, highly recommend. Thank you so much, Chris, for your time. I really appreciate you and all that you do. Uh, this conversation has really filled me up and made me just even more excited about this, this world of alchemy. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>